Thank you for joining us again here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm Stefan Schwartz, and this is the Ironwood Cut 24 Crosscut Saw. All right, taking a look at the control panel here on the Cut 24, everything's pretty simple and very easy to use for any operator. We've got our main disconnect here, obviously in the on position as shown of my power indicator light. We've got our air guards on and off for the pneumatic cycle. This saw is pneumatically controlled in its cycle movement. So therefore, when these are both off, I'll have absolutely no movement in the saw. We've got our main motor on and off, as well as a manual adjustment switch, which you can fire the saw manually here, as well as with the foot pedal at the bottom below, an e-stop that's very easy to access as well. So because this saw is pneumatically operated, there's a couple of ways in which we can speed up or slow down our cycle times to maintain pace with the rest of our production. And one of the ways is right here on the front of the machine. This is actually limiting the blade's projection. So if I don't need to cut through really thick material, I can adjust this down. Or if I'm cutting through thick material, I can adjust this up in order to maintain higher blade projection or lower blade projection. Essentially, the further my blade needs to move, the longer it takes to move that way, and I can maintain shorter cutting times on smaller work pieces by limiting my blade height. Another way in which we can control the cycle time is these two gauges on the side as well. Again, I can control the speed in which the guard comes up and down, as well as the speed in which the blade traverses through the material. So if I want to make a faster cut, I can release the guard quicker and move the blade faster through the material. Same thing goes in reverse. If I want to slow the cut down for a better quality, I can loosen these knobs or tighten these knobs to adjust the airflow of the pneumatic pressure through the saw, which regulates that drive of the blade going up and the guard releasing as well. And one of the last ways in which I can control my cycle times here is this physical hard stop here as well on the guard. If I want to cut the thickest material possible on this machine, I release this all the way up, giving my guard the full movement trajectory uh, versus doing a lot of smaller pieces. I can close this loop and maintain a very small movement with the guard going back up and down as it releases. Again, uh, maintaining blade trajectory, guard movement, as well as the pneumatic pressure of the machine, I can both keep up with my production as well as maintain a really high cut quality. Taking a look at some of the safety features on the Ironwood Cut 24, we've obviously got a very large blade guard here to maintain operator safety at all times during cutting applications. These acrylic fingers on the infeed side as well give us even further penetration to not allow anything foreign to enter or exit the cutting area during its operation. So I can simply adjust these up if I'm doing thicker work pieces or higher material that requires more space. And then of course, again, lock these back down when I'm cutting thinner material to make sure that no hands can reach anywhere near the cut line during operations. So looking at the Cut 24 here, this is actually a right hand model. That means that I'm gonna get my best cut quality feeding from left to right. I'm gonna be able to square my cut perfectly on the infeed fence with the machine there. And on my outfeed fence here on the right hand side, I'm gonna have access to my blade. So on a left-handed model, this guard would be on the left-hand side of the machine and I'd be feeding from right to left. Being a right-handed model here, we're gonna have our best and most accurate results feeding from left to right using the machine's infeed fence to square our cuts. So as you can see, these ironwood cut saws pair very well with extension tables. Whether flat or roller tables for heavier materials, I can add back fences, manual scales, and flip stops as well that I can adjust here along these. Whether one, two, or 10 flip stops, it really doesn't matter, whatever's best for your operation. And these tables are available in four and eight foot lengths and I can easily stack them to get as long or as short as I desire. So the Cut 24, that 24 is no random number, that's actually the blade's diameter. So I've got a 24 inch blade here, allowing me to cut up to eight inches thick of material, whether that's round rod or an eight by eight piece of wood. Um, additionally, in the blade's cavity here on the right hand side of the machine, you can see we've got interlock door switches, making sure that all operators are locked out of the machine until the blades come to a complete halt and is no longer rotating. Safety for us here at Ironwood is absolutely paramount. And in order to do so, we make sure all access doors remain closed at all times during operation of the machine. Taking a look at the infeed side of the machine, if you open up the access panel, we've got access to the main motor here as well as the belt changes. So this actual machine is powered by a 15 horsepower IE3 motor, giving it maximum torque and excellent durability throughout the lifetime of the machine. 
So as we're getting ready to make some test cuts with the Cut 24 today, there's a couple things I wanna highlight before we get into the cutting process. As I hit this foot pedal down here to actuate the cut, my guard is actually going to move down, clamping the workpiece against the table and against my infeed fence here so that it doesn't move during the cutting operation. My blade is going to come up inside the guard so that it remains housed within the guard the entire time during the cutting operation. As the blade reaches max height, it will then retract into the table. My guard will release and the operator will be allowed to position the workpiece to the next cut or offload to the kitting or assembly area. So today we're gonna to be cutting some wood with the Cut24, but on other models for our plastics and metals versions, we have other options and features geared more for that kind of material. So blade misting, air over oil cylinders for a smoother saw blade stroke throughout the cutting operation, all necessary features when cutting plastics and non-ferrous metals. But today we're just gonna get down and dirty and make some sawdust. 